There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You are our living hope. Your presence. I've tasted and seen. The sweetest of lies, where my heart becomes free, and my shame is undone. Your presence, All right. Well, good morning. How are you guys doing? Excellent. Good. Are we at normal volumes, Dean? Awesome. Well, good morning, guys. We're going to have a great time this morning as a family and community, just diving into the presence of the Lord. Just to let you know, if you don't know, if you're visiting, I'm Jason, one of the pastors, and um, we have this big open space up front. You're free to dance, clap, sing, kneel down, lay down, sit down, jump up and down, all that kind of stuff. Uh, worship however you feel like you're supposed to. Uh, just honor the person next to you, and uh, that'll be good. So uh, we have uh, flags over here for teenagers and above. We try to uh, keep it just to that so kids don't do sword fights. So pretty please try to manage that. And then we have ribbons for the kids on, I guess, that side of the stage this morning. And uh, they're free to do that. And we really encourage the next generation of worshipers. Uh, and we really just encourage you guys to just dive in 100%, whatever that looks like for you. If that's sitting down, do it 100%. If it's jumping up and down, do that 100%, whatever it is. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. All right. And uh, so why don't you guys stand up just for the beginning, and then uh, we're going to pray, and you guys are going to get a double blessing because you are the church on time. <laughs> right? So, so let's just say, I receive the double blessing. Because I was on time to church. And Lord, help the late people. Let them have a quadruple portion. <laughs> Got real quiet after that. It did get really quiet. I had to fix it. So. <laughs> All right, so if you're an upfront person, come on up front. We're just going to uh, just dive in. No lawnmower songs, no warm ups. Uh, we're just we're just going for it. So, Lord Jesus, we just love you and we thank you so much for everything that you're doing in our house, Lord. We thank you for love and mercy, Lord. We thank you that you're you're not all about judgment and condemnation, Lord. We yeah. thank you. <sighs> oh man, can I be real with you guys for a minute? Please. It was uh, as we're praying this. We we had a gentleman out front this morning passing out cards about us being a cult and this kind of stuff. So I had to, so I had to, I, I said, you know, we're just, uh, we're just, we just don't have this approach. And, and he was, I said, we're about love and mercy. And he was like, so you don't believe in the Bible? And I was like, uh, yes, we do. <laughs> we just have a different approach. And so, um, yeah, so that was, you know, interesting this morning. So that means that God is up to something good. So anytime something like that happens, that means something good is about to happen. And uh, so I just want to tell you guys, we, we love the Bible. We believe the Bible. <laughs> and uh, God is good. And his, his love endures forever. So, Lord Jesus, we just thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love and your goodness. And we thank you. <sighs> we thank you that relationship with you leads us to repentance, God. We just thank you for that, that the goodness of God leads us to repentance, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just ask that you would just be made manifest in this place in a real and tangible way this morning. We love you, and we just want to honor you with our, with our voices, with our hands, with, with our, our motions, and, and, and our, everything that you've placed inside of us, God. And we just ask all these things. We say and declare these things in your name. Amen. Amen. So before we, uh, before we get going real quick, there's been a verse our team's been, I know, we've got a little bit, we're, preach, we're preaching before we even get going. Come 
But our uh, Thursday nights for worship practice, we kind of have, we do like a little mini kind of powwow and talk to each other, see how we're all doing. And um, I just feel like we should, it's something we need to share for Sunday morning too. And so in Psalms, uh, David has this awesome thing he says at 17. He says, hear a just cause, O Lord, attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer and lips of my, uh, ear, give ear to my prayer from lips free of deceit. From your presence, let my vindication come. Let uh, let our let your eyes behold the right. With that line, he says, "From your presence, let my vindication come." And how many know what that word vindication means? Like it's a really loaded word. It's a really strong. Word. So I didn't, I've never really looked into that. What that word means? Um, so it means to clear, to uphold, to claim for oneself, to justify, to avenge, to fight for. Like, there's a lot in that. So just the idea, David understood that when he entered God's presence, God didn't want him to worry about all that stuff. He just wanted him to sit and bask, and he was going to fight for him. He was going to claim him as his own. He was going to justify the wrongs in his life. He was going to take care of it. So when we worship, it's so easy to be, to get distracted by all that stuff. Thinking about, oh, gosh, I have this bill. I have this thing. I have all these other things I got to do. But God knew that was going to be a struggle for us. And David made this prayer that he's going to vindicate us as we worship. How good is that? Come on. That we don't have to worry about stuff. That our worship and hanging out with him takes care of it. Like, we like to think that maybe, oh, man, we're just hanging out in the presence. Not a whole lot's happening. But there is so much happening. There is so much happening in the unseen that you guys are unaware of sometimes. That just because we're hanging out and spending time with God, there is so much he's doing on your behalf. Just because you're saying, I want to spend time with you. Come on, that's good. So as we worship, we worship this morning, just kind of let go of all that stuff. Just know that he is fighting on your behalf, that he is there for you. He is upholding you. He's claiming you as his own. He's your avenger. How cool is that? Come on. I love it. All right, let's do it. And in the sun, and in the sun. 
the sun to rain, and my life celebrates that you are good. Yes, you are good. With a cry of praise, and with a cry of praise, my heart will proclaim that you are good. Yes, you are good. In the sun to rain, oh, in the sun to rain. Shout because you are good. Yes, you are good. Oh, I'll sing it out. And I'll sing because you are good. And I'll dance because you are good. And I'll shout because you are good. Yes, you are good. Sing, I'll sing. Oh, I'll sing because you are good. And I'll dance because you are good. And I'll shout because you are good. You are good to me. Oh, I sing because you are good, and I dance because you are good, and I shout because you are good. Oh, you are good to me. Yeah. Oh, you are good to me. Oh, yes, you are good. To cry of praise, my heart will proclaim that you are good, you are good, and in the sun of rain, my life celebrates that you are good, as you are good, with a cry of praise, with a cry of praise, my heart
go back into that chorus and I want you guys to really dance and jump and stand in that victory, stand in that truth, stand in the almighty power of God, stand in that reverence of you are God, you are powerful, you are mighty, and I will dance and I will stand in truth. And I sing because you are good and I'll dance because you are good and I'll shout because you are good. You are good. Come on. Oh, I sing because you are good and I dance because you are good and I shout because you are good. Cause you are good. Oh, see that I sing. Oh, I sing because you are good and I dance because you are good and I shout because you are good. Cause you are good. Just a drum. Oh, I sing because you are good, and I dance because you are good, and I shout because you are good. You are just one more time. Let's do it. Oh, I sing because you are good, and I dance because you are good, and I shout because you are good. Cause you are good. Oh, we thank you, yeah, you're good, cause you are good to me. Come on. He's got my world in his hands and my worries on his shoulders. World in his hands and my worries on his shoulders. World. That's good. Let's sing that out. He's got my world. He's got my world in his hands and my worries on his shoulders. My world in his hands and my worries on his shoulders. My world in his hands and my worries on his shoulders. My world in his hands. Come on, he's got my world. Give it all to you. Oh, I give it all to you. I'm not asking for the wise. I don't need to understand. Just give it all, I give it all. Oh, I give it all to you. Trusting that you'll make something beautiful out of me. Oh, I give it all to you, God. Trusting that you'll make something beautiful out of me. Come on, just give it all to Him. Oh, I give it all to you, God. Trusting that you'll make with 
my hands wide open I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open we got a theme going on this morning now we just worship he's going to take care of it that visual of just climbing up a mountain Usually you need all four limbs, you're crawling up it, but God says, just put your hands up. Just put your hands up and I'll take you right up there. I'll take you over that mountain, I'll turn your mountains into valleys, you'll walk right past it, no problem. Anything you're struggling with, anything you're worried about, it's just all soft through praise, all soft through worship. He's vindicating you, come on, he's fighting for you, he's taking care of you. Let's just sing that out with that in mind, declaring that. I'm going to climb with my hands wide open, he's going to take care of it. Not by my hands, but by his hands, come on. Oh, I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. Climb this with my hands wide open. Oh, I will climb this mountain. That's so good, come on. You're making valleys out of my mountains. You're making valleys out of my mountains. You're making valleys out of my All right, we're going to, I really feel like we're supposed to mess up worship here. <laughs> so I know we have uh, like the front row, we have beverages and all that kind of stuff. Just stay, stay in your, your attitude of worship really quick. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to clear these chairs out of this front row here. And we're just going to move these chairs. I just want one left in the center. 
So if we can get some people to help with that, that'd be awesome. Just leave one chair. Just push them off to the side. Just push them off to the side. There's definitely a theme going about God's goodness and God's victory and his healing and that kind of stuff. There you go. All right, Bob. This chair is for you, buddy. So get on up here. So here's the thing that I saw. Um, And here's the reality, and I have permission to share this stuff. So the doctors have given Bob 6 to 12 months, and uh, we don't agree with that. (laughs) And there's times where we, you know, we ask people to pray. And I've even said before, you know, pray as if your life depends on it. How would you pray if your life depended upon something? You know, you'd probably be a little bit more motivated. Well, pray as if, dance as if, worship as if Bob's life depended on it. Because it does. Okay? And the thing is, is is even just in worship, so when we get a bad report, yes, we can go to Scripture because we do love the Bible in this church. We can go to Scripture and we can do that, but also we can just praise Jesus for being who he is. And we can celebrate him for being who he is. (coughs) In the midst of stuff that we don't understand. So I'm just really, earlier I said you could worship however you want to, but really I want to encourage you guys to just get on up front and and we're just going to surround Bob and we're going to worship Jesus. This is what I don't want. I don't want you to swarm him and overwhelm him and that type of thing. But I want people up front, his, his, this community, to surround him with worship to Jesus. Surround him with the love of the Father. Surround him with, with victory and support. And, and so just don't, don't take this as your personal time to prophesy over him or that type of thing. But let's just surround him and let's celebrate what God is doing. Because we know that God didn't give Bob cancer. Right? He did not give Bob cancer. It's not a punishment. He didn't do it to teach him a lesson. However, through it, Bob, I can tell you, is a changed man. Bob is totally a changed man. So that's that's why so many churches believe that God gives cancer. Because it transforms people so much, so so often in a positive way. And, but really what it is, it's the redemptive story of Christ. The devil comes out to steal, kill, and destroy. And, and, then, and then the Lord just comes in and says, watch this. And he can, he, can change, he can change things in an instant. And guys, in this house, we have seen cancer dissolve. We have seen, we have seen bowel obstructions, small bowel obstructions totally disappear where surgery is no longer required. We have seen broken bones, people in a boot waiting for the swelling to go down to get a cast. We have seen them never go in a cast because all of a sudden the x-ray machine's broken and it did a... It, they don't know what happened, right? So we've seen miracles in this house. And so I, want, I don't want any like, oh, God, if it's your will, if you can't, there's none of that attitude in this house. If I hear it, if I hear it, I'll shut you down in love, but it'll be very abrupt, right? Okay? <clears throat> but I, 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 just want us to, I just want us to just worship like there's no tomorrow. And, just, and, and, and you can pray over Bob, but again, I don't want it to be... Don't, don't overwhelm him, not 30 people at once, and don't take this as your chance to prophesy for a half hour over him. It's like if you're going to pray for him, make it like 30 seconds or less, and I'm going to kind of be monitoring and watching. So if I say, hey, you're done, don't take offense to it. We just want to leave room for somebody else, okay, and we really want to honor Bob. Does that sound good? Are we, are we everyone clear? We're Yes? We're good? Okay. So let's just go in. Let's just worship, man. I don't care how long worship goes today. This is part of the plan for today anyway. So let's just dive in. The king of mine. Be the mountain where I run. The fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shout. 
song for my life Oh, he is my song Say it again Let the king of my heart Be the mountain where I run The fountain I drink from Oh, he is my song Let the king of my heart Be the shadow where I hide The ransom for my life
take this mic because we don't want the music to be any quieter. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to continue going. And uh, I'm going to, here's the thing, really quick teaching moment. I'm pretty pleased with the cherry on top listener. Dean will mute you, <laughs> right? So we're going to open up the mic, and uh, during worship, you can come up here and declare life and healing and restoration over Bob and the family. And... Uh, uh, Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So uh, we're just, uh, Caleb's going to kick it off, and we're just going to, we're keep worshiping. You don't have to be quiet that you are good, you are good, you're never going to let me down. That's awesome. Keep going with that. Loud, victorious, triumphant, and uh, it's going to be good. All right, Caleb, go. Yeah. Yeah, actually, um, just a, a, a form of prayer is dance, and I actually feel like some the warriors in this house are supposed to gather around Bob. Whoever is a warrior, it doesn't matter how you move, but if you consider yourself to be a warrior, I want you to come, and I want you to take the warrior's stance, that the warriors fight, and they get breakthrough, and they win, and they get victory. And the victory, they don't understand defeat. They don't accept defeat because they're warriors. So I want the warriors to gather around and I want the worship team to start singing what they're supposed to sing. And I want you to start to dance. I want you to start to move. I want you to start to be the warriors of God, the sons and daughters, and break that thing down. Break that cancer down and be gone in Jesus' name. So come on, man. Come on. Dance. Dance. Break those walls down. Come on. You're never gonna let. Come on, dance. have anything on your heart to come and pray over Bob, please come forward. We're just going to declare and pray over him. Come on. Yeah, if anyone has anything on their heart, come on and come forward. Yeah, Papa God, right now we just release heaven. Father God, we release the light. We release the life. We release the love. Father God, I release your goodness all throughout Bob. Father God, I declare that nothing that does not exist in heaven can exist in Bob. And we declare that by your stripes, Father, that Jesus, that Bob is healed. And I declare today you are healed in Jesus' name. And Father God, we release that decree. We release that word into the atmosphere. And Bob, we release that word into you. Amen. Bob, I saw you, I saw a large dam, a very large dam, and you were standing below the dam. And the water was building behind the dam. And as the water was building, the dam started to crack. It started to crack, it started to crack. 
and there were holes in the dam. And so you can expect there's going to be a breakthrough in that dam, and you're going to be washed in the water of the Word of God. We just declare healing. We stand upon the Word of God. Yes, it's going to happen. I saw you. You're expecting. You're in a worshipful position. You're expecting. And that dam is going to break in Jesus' name. Sonia. Sonia. Come on up. Right now, I'm speaking life to your cells. I'm speaking death to cancer right now. I'm speaking life to you, and I'm speaking health to the whole family. I'm seeing that cancer cells just burst because of the fear of God. And I'm claiming new life to you, claiming new life, new life, new life. Just speak Exodus 14 14 over you Bob and it says be still and let him fight for you you might feel like you're in a battle right now but he's in your corner you just sit still and let him provide wound care and healing and your defense Exodus 14 14 Bob we just blazing that on your heart right now and I repent right now publicly for any judgment I've held against you over the pink hat <laughs> Or anything else I love you from the bottom of my heart I feel like we're two peas in a pod i you are my not only my brother in Christ but I feel like you are a brother in so many ways Bob I thank you that we've walked this out and we're not finished you have so much more to go it's not over return to your first love the things you did when you were a young man heal the sick raise the dead yes prophesy Bob, now is the time to stand and to stand firm in what you believe and your faith is rising. He says, stand, brother. We brace you with the armor. The shield of faith is upon you. Your head's been girded up with the helmet of salvation, brother. The word of God upon your feet. Touch his feet, brothers. Touch his feet. Touch his feet. Shokoratadatia. As you stand firm, you will not fall back. You will become a pillar. Your faith is going to increase, Bob. Grab on to the shield. Put the shield up before you. Don't let those fiery darts hit you no more. Grab this sword, brother, and fight the battle. For the battle is yours, says the Lord. The Lord said he has taken the keys back from the enemy that brings forth death and destruction. Giving you the keys. Let your faith arise. Began believing the faith will arise. Hold the keys high. Put them around your neck. Knowing that you are the living. You 
are living. Jesus. Thank you, God. Glory. So we are always confident, even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not at home with the Lord, for we live by believing, not by seeing. Yes, yes, we are fully confident we'd, we'd, we would rather be away from this earthly body, for then will we be at home with the Lord. So whether we are here in this body or away from this body, our goal and aim is to please the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to let you know, nothing can take you down. You are a general in God's army, and there's no stopping that. Nothing at all. Awesome job, guys. We're just going to keep going. You know, we haven't even finished our normal allotted time of worship. So, I love that, our allotted time of worship.
song real quick. Disappointed me. You've never disappointed me. So keep shining on. Keep shining on. Keep shining. Yeah, Papa, we just, uh, we thank you for what you're doing in this house and in this region. We thank you for what you're doing in Bob. Lord, we thank you for the healing, the restoration, the, the transformation. Lord, we thank you so much for this community, this family that is not gathering around another family. We're gathering around a part of our family. We're all in this together. And Bob, I will do this every Sunday. <laughs> we will fight. We will fight for this thing. Absolutely. You can even hold the microphone. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Years ago, when I was moving in the spirit, I had two prophetic dreams. And the one I'm going to tell you about first. So this will stick, you know, I ain't not talking bull. I dreamed of a girl named Joy. It's conceived. There stands the result of that pride dream. Soon after that, I had another one. Don't get discouraged. This is good. I dreamed of my death. I didn't know it was of the Lord. And ever since that day, you've never seen me worship here. Because here, it feels like fingernails scratching on a chalkboard. 
Because when I went and I stood before the Lord, I was in that new body that he promised us all. And that body is an instrument to worship God. The whole being, soul, and everything is just beyond the imagination. But this is what I realized when I was standing before Christ worshiping. I look back over my shoulder and I go, it's all worth the trip. This time around when the door knocked and I didn't see a long future for me, I asked God, loved by God not more important so there it is yeah amen to that I, I also wanted to just let you know every tear I've cried this morning is because I'm overwhelmed with all new people spending all this time on this one man that I love that and this week, it is amazing how he has brought someone every single day, several times a day, to support us in it. Even if it's through a Facebook message or whatever, it's, it's just amazing. You know, you always see these things where it says... I've been through this tragedy, and I can't believe the outpouring of love that people have shown. And I thought, nah, yeah, right. It's just a little trite saying. No, it is real. It is real. I've never felt more love in my life. And, and the lessons that God's teaching us, that unbelievers can talk to us, too, and speak life into us. And I've been a snooty Christian, and I, I apologize to anybody that I've offended. Um, and it's just been amazing how he's taken care of us. <laughs> I was supposed to say this earlier and I'm sorry I didn't but um, I just got pumped because I can't believe I come to a church that we get to come here and defeat cancer like I don't think you guys understand what just happened like I feel like we're supposed to worship like the cancer just came out like I want you guys to physically like see the cancer that just came out of my dad and celebrate. Why are we being so sad about this? The cancer is gone. Let's celebrate. Let's worship. This house is full of Joshua and Caleb's. Despite bad reports, they just continue to stand on the word that God said. So we're going to, we anticipate good reports. Uh, like 30, 30 seconds or less. Okay. I can preach that fast. Psalms 118. I called out to the Lord in my distress and the Lord answered me and he set me in a broad place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do to me. The Lord is for me among those who help me. And the key verse the Lord gave me uh, was, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. It's good. It's good. All right. Well. We're not going to stop worshiping, but we are going to shift gears. We're going to receive our tithes and our offerings here. So if you want to find your spot, find your checkbook, your debit card, whatever, 
And uh, let's see. Worship team, you did a great job. Just uh, hold tight just for a minute, though. So you guys did awesome today. So we're going to, we're gonna, like I said, we're going to take our tithes and offerings. I'm actually going to pray over it today. Um, Ed's gone, so we'll, uh, I'll do it. So again, if you're going to make a check, make it out to Revolution Church. Caprice is up here waving her hand. She has the digital card reader. It's safe and secure, and uh, we can get that facilitated. How many of you guys know that generosity is is one key into the kingdom. It's one of the keys. There's a couple, right? But generosity is absolutely one of them. And, you know, just really quickly, we're going to... I'm not trying to preach it, you guys, but the reality is, is this. There's statistics in the church for reasons. And the t- statistics are, is that, uh, you know, 20% of the church carries the entire load the financial burden of the church. What would happen in this house if the other 80% gave? How many church plants could we sow into? How many more wells could we dig in Africa? How many more uh, families could we help in our community? So I just, re- I just really want to encourage you, guys, Give, even if it's a buck. Give what you can. Don't minimize your thing. If you're like, man, I only have $3, give your $3, right? God will honor that. He multiplies stuff. He, and it's not so much even about multiplication. It's this thing right inside of here. It's right here. It's a heart issue. And, and, and the reality is, is you are robbing yourself of a blessing. How many of you need more blessing in your life, right? Really? This isn't a manipulation thing. It's just legit. <laughs> you, you give and you get blessed. I'm not saying you're going to get your $3 back or your $500 back or whatever it is. I'm just saying you're going to get blessed. So there's your, there's your uh, tithing sermon. So the way we do things in our house is we have buckets up here. We have the card reader with Caprice over here. I'm going to officially pray. And then uh, you guys come to the buckets because it's an act of worship. So, Lord Jesus, we just thank you for everything that you're doing again in this house. We can't thank you enough. I thank you for what you're doing in this region. I thank you for uh, the church plants in the region, Lord. We have uh, uh, church plants just that we're, we're being able to help out with all, all over the place. And it's super cool, Lord. We just... We just want to be good stewards and we want to sow into more and lord we thank you for everything that this house is able to do locally and we we just want to do more god and we just thank you so much for every penny that comes in this house we love you and we adore you and we ask all these things in your name amen all right guys come on forward
All right, guys, we're going to try and pull it back in. If you guys want to come on in. You guys doing good? Yes. Man, that was good worship today. That was really good. Oh, I was hearing something, so it's all good. It's all good. I was trying to figure out what it was. Well, excellent. Well, hey, uh, let's do uh, house announcements and that kind of stuff. Um, what are the house announcements? We have Dwell this Friday. No, yes, yes, Jesse's like, and then his wife was elbowing him, yes, so dwell this Friday, and then what, potluck, barbecue, Sunday, 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 yeah, uh, that'll be uh, next week, we're doing our uh, community uh, barbecue, again, the church will provide all the hot dogs, hamburgers, and buns, you guys provide the, uh, and we'll do the condiments too, you guys do the side dishes, potato salad chips, and beverages. Does that make sense? We should have it pretty much on autopilot. We'll have the bouncy house for the kids. Thank you, Paul and May. Well, actually, we could, we could have two bouncy houses, a little one for the little ones, and then a big one for the bigger ones. Yeah. So it's part of that double portion anointing that we walk under. Um, okay, then uh, August 20th, we have a movie night here at the church in the sanctuary, and we're going to be showing the movie, Do You Believe? So it'll just be a f- we're just doing community nights just to hang out as a family, and it's a great movie for the kids and, and uh, for adults. And yes, we will have popcorn. popcorn. That was uh, one of the things that uh, we purchased for those of us that were in the vineyard years ago. And uh, when we purchased this building as the Revolution Church, we got contents and everything. And I went downstairs, and I was like, yes, the popcorn machine is still here. So it's good. Uh, That is going to be the 20th, August 20th uh, at, it says 5.30 p.m. I didn't set the time. So, all right. And then uh, this is a ways out, but you can plan. Uh, September 17th, Women's Revive Night. So I know that there's no neither male nor female in Christ Jesus, but this is specifically for girls, women, ladies, okay? It's going to be a great time. Caprice and Kaylee have something special planned. Um, am I forgetting anything? Jessica. No, Jessica, no. Okay. T-shirts. You guys have ordered T-shirts. I have an update for you. They were supposed to be ready uh, this Sunday, today, and I went to go pick them up, and they had a little bit of a delay, so it should be next Sunday. I apologize. It's out of my control. But next Sunday, we should be all, like, sport and revolution gear. You can still order T-shirts. They just, the price has doubled. So, no. <laughs> Whoa. No. Yeah, no, you can still order T-shirts, and... Uh, and hats and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, well, we should have those for you next week. Okay. Anything else? Nothing else. I think that's it. What were you saying about Jessica? I don't want to miss something. Oh, and and Jessica's a part of the revive night for the women's night as well. <clears throat> so, we don't want to leave anybody out. So, good stuff happening. So, make sure you guys are ready for barbecue next week. Rain or shine, we're doing it. And uh, it's going to be, it's just a great time. So, um, yeah. You guys doing good? Okay, I know today's been kind of an odd day. If you're visiting us, uh, not every Sunday is like this. Thank the Lord <laughs> that for diversity, though. I mean, no, I don't mean thank the Lord in a bad way. I mean, I think it's, it's good that we, things change up. You know, we mix things up here. It's not the same every weekend. So, I always tell people, if you're checking out our church, try it four times. <laughs> and then and then after four times, and this is really true for any church, because sometimes you'll just go one time. If you're looking for a church and you're really looking for a church, go to each church four times. Because the first time you show up, there's going to be a guest speaker, and he's going to be from Africa. And, 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 and then the next week, it'll be someone's something and, and whatnot. Anyway, 
So, yeah, it'll be Baptism Sunday or something. So four times is great. So anyway, we're honored that you're here today. For if you're, if Everybody, we're honored you're here, but I guess we're honored to have you today too. So uh, a couple of things. Today is just going to be a little more different. So, um, all right. Who are we calling up? We need Sonia. Sonja. Norm. Norm. Delane. Delane. Cliff. And Cliff Bill. Cliff and Bill. Come forward. Come forward. Bill. Bill Gowdy. You. Yes. Bill Gowdy. Bill Gowdy. Come on up front. Come here. You are the next <laughs> contestant on The Price is Right at the Revolution Church. <laughs> you can stand over here with these amazing people. And then Deborah, but she's not here. She's not here so. today. So De- Deborah's up here in spirit. You just—I don't know where she's at, but she's over there. So, <coughs> so th- there's a lot of people that help and volunteer around the Revolution Church, and uh, there are some people that are just like week after week after week. It's like a like a, yeah, year after year. It's like a part-time job for them. And uh, so we just want to honor these people. So Sonia, what does she do? She's here. How many of you, how many of you are drinking coffee this morning? Sonia. Right? Coffee. <laughs> it's actually a line item on our budget because we don't we don't do Folgers or something. We do good stuff. So yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right. And then we got Norm. Everyone say, Norm. <laughs> Norm is a part of our amazing cleaning crew. Every Monday they come up and clean up your mess. Yeah. And Sony does that too. She's kind of a multitasker. And uh, Delane here, she is a part of that as well. Every Monday. <laughs> she comes up and faithfully cleans, and, and, and Deborah does as well. Deborah's not here, but Deborah, you know, she comes up uh, every Sunday morning. She vacuums and does touch up stuff and, um, and takes out the garbage and, and helps Sonia and helps wherever she can, and uh, also Mondays with cleaning. And then uh, we have Mr. Bill. He's awesome. He comes up here. He he mows our lawn every other week, right? Yeah. And and he's got one of those cool mowers that has the vacuum thing on the back. So if you if you ever come up here, so what happens is is I mow it one week and Bill mows it the other week. And so if there's grass clippings like all over the place, that was me. But <laughs> Because we don't have a bagger catcher thing, but he has this really cool vacuum attachment. So when it's like pristine, perfect, that was Bill. Yeah. So, yeah. And Cliff Silliman, he's also helps out with uh, mowing and uh, weed eating and that kind of stuff. Recently, it was really, it was kind of funny, but I felt bad at the same time. But he just took it in stride. He was out here weed eating the ditch out here and it was super hot and I was walking over to the fence to hand him a water and so he was kind of on top of the ditch like this and then he stepped into the ditch for me to be able to hand a water to him and apparently it still had about six inches of water in it so his shoes and everything were totally soaked and I was like well here's the water you know (laughs) but uh you know he was like I don't think I have the energy to do very much today and then I came back the next day and he had the whole thing done and so he just we're just really yeah (laughs) you know if churches could hire everybody I believe they would but the reality is is we really rely on volunteers and uh, it's uh, you guys make this the thing go. So we just appreciate you guys and everyone else that volunteers as well. Um, we just wanted to make sure the, some of these guys have been doing this, you know, for six years. So because coffee is important, 
we wanted to make sure that you guys got some coffee from Starbucks. So we got them each a $25 gift certificate to uh, Starbucks. And, and so, and that's really from you guys, right? So, uh, and so we didn't have any uh, marriage issues. We gave Delane and Norm their own personal one. So... I believe Norm will probably use it all in one day. So, <laughs> so thank you guys very much for serving us. It's awesome. Be blessed. There'll be a, a sermon today, I promise. <laughs> like I said, today's just a, uh, a really good but odd day. All right, Ronnie, you ready? Good. <laughs> she is an amazing Proverbs woman. In the good way, not the, not the domineer, like I don't lord over her, but she's just an awesome wife. Yeah, yeah. So what's that? I don't know. I, I keep asking her, but she, she just looks at me like this. So <laughs> they asked when you, when, when you were preaching, and I said, you look at me like this. So anyway, well, we got more stuff to do today. Thank you, honey. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> All right. You know a real men cry? Yeah. True that. I wasn't a crier for a long time, and then when uh, the Holy Spirit really got me, man, I just turned into a baby, but it's good. Um, so today's going to be a little bit rough. Um, I'm not even excited to do this. Okay, well, all right. Pastor Lene, stand up. Mm. Yeah, come on up here. Well, uh, most of you guys know Pastor Lene, and she is absolutely amazing. Uh, what you, some of the things that you don't know is uh, <laughs> when we set her in and ordained her as a pastor, what was it, five years ago? Yeah, it was just about five. What month was it? Do you remember? Yeah. I think it was April as well. So in April, about five years ago, um, I, uh, I think it was a month before we actually did it, I went to Robert, and it was like I was asking for her hand in marriage. I was like, <laughs> Robert, do I have your permission to put Lene in as a, as a pastor and ordain her? And, and his response was, so is she above me, or um, <laughs> do I have to listen to her, you know? <laughs> So after a couple of meetings, we got that worked out, and, uh, and Lene has just been absolutely amazing in uh, loving you guys, serving the church, really developing our Sozo ministry and whatnot, and the things that you may not know about Lene, so really quickly about the day we put her in. So she had gotten a prophetic word like 25 years prior that she was going to be put into ministry and ordained as a, as a pastor and all this kind of stuff. And she forgot that word. And literally, we, we went back and researched, and it was like the day that we had ordained her, 25 years prior, 20 years prior, or something like that. Uh, literally to the day is when she was put in. So it's, she, she is a fulfillment of prophecy. She's a fulfillment of uh, needs, you know, in this house. She, we, 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 we need her and whatnot. But here's the thing. This is why we have her up here. Um, Lene is still working 40, 50 hours a week as a nurse, and she is a rock star dialysis nurse. She is. So she's working 40 to 50 hours a week doing that. She's up at 3.30 in the morning, and uh, she gets off work at, you know, 1.30, 2 o'clock, and then she races up here, 
and she does sozo and comes to our staff meetings, come to, comes to our board meetings and all that kind of stuff. And in the last year, um, Robert has been getting into some trouble. Um, actually, I guess it's been almost three years. He decided three years ago it would be a good idea to cut his thumb off on his table saw. And then he decided it would be a good idea to climb up a ladder and fall off of it and have brain surgery. And then he decided <laughs> it just, so Robert's been going through some medical stuff, and it's just been taking more and more time um, of Lene's time, you know, obviously as, as, as a wife and, and taking care of Robert and their relationship and all that kind of stuff at home. So today's a, a bittersweet day. We celebrate Pastor Lene, but she's actually stepping down. Uh, just because she's just tired, you know, man, working, working, you know, 40 to 50 hours a week, uh, and then uh, d- doing 20 hours a week here, 25 hours a week here, and then doing all the duties at home. It's just getting to be much. And so I want to let you know, and then she's going to talk a little bit too. Um, she is. Um, this is this is bittersweet. We love her. She's not going anywhere. She's not quitting the church. Let's please be mature Christians and listen to what I am saying and don't read anything into anything because this, this happens all that you got. You, some of you are like, why is he saying this? Because every single time we say, hey, everything's good. There's nothing bad going on. It's okay. Then the rumors start flying. Everything is good. She's just tired. <laughs> She's just tired. It's okay. It's okay. Everything's fine. She's not quitting the church. She's still around, but we're just not going to call her Pastor Lene. You can call her Mama Lene, and she may not be doing uh, memorial services or weddings, or she may not be able to meet with you, you know, that type of stuff. Just, just bless her in this transition and uh, let's honor her for, for, the, for who she is, what she's done. And, I mean, like the, the Sozo ministry that she is really, I said, hey, we, I want to do Sozo. And kind of just, that was it. And I just said, go. And I don't know if you guys know much about Sozo stuff, but, man, we literally Sozo people from all over the nation. We have people from uh, Alaska, Wyoming, Idaho, Canada. We actually have people from Reading come up here for Sozos. Uh, we've had uh, people from Las Vegas, Colorado, um, Oregon. It's just come to this little church, Revolution Church in Port Angeles, to get Sozoed. So she's really started a, a great ministry that's going to continue on. She's still going to be, I think, on the team, right? On the team, but not leading the team. Sonia is actually going to lead the team. Sonia! So, so I'm going to let Lene talk for a minute, and then uh, we're just going to stretch our hands out in a minute, and we're going to bless her, and we're going to release her and thank her for all that she's done. Amen. I didn't come up here one more time. Can I? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, it has been such uh, an honor and a privilege uh, to be a pastor here. Actually, I can remember when I was nine years old, I had told my mom, I go, I would love to be a pastor. My mind thought at that time was it was because I saw where the pastor only had to read out of one book. And I thought, well, I could do that. And they had like a house next to the church. I thought, well, that's, I'd love that. So that was my uh, rationale when I was nine. Things change, but things don't change. Titles can change. Um, Obligations might change, but our essence never changes. What we do, because that's who we are, that in me will never change. And I would like to say you probably won't see a difference between what I do when I was a pastor to what you see me do by just being here and being a part of the family. You, you probably won't even know there was a transition. Because I love you all. I am passionate about you. 
where someone might walk around and wonder about, well, what should we do with this part of the church or this building or that? I look around and I go, I wonder what I can do about you, about, you know, what can I do for you? How can I pray for you when I sense something? That's not going to change my essence, my mandate, uh, my calling. All those things don't change. A title changes, but my heart doesn't ever change. And truly, there is no, there is nothing, there is no like, oh, did she, did she get tired because she was doing too much? Yes and no. It wasn't because um, uh, there were, Jason would let me do anything I wanted to do. If something was going on, he goes, and Lene, you can just do whatever you want. Okay. And you are, no, you do whatever you want. I had like total freedom. I had total freedom. I, that, it was like amazing. But I just want you to know that I love you. I hope that he still sometimes gives me a chance to uh, preach or, you know, if he gives me a word. Because <laughs> I know I've got a good word left in me. So. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I just love you all. I thank you for this opportunity to uh, get to be uh, something I always wanted to be. And it's just a little shift. It's just a season change. Um, it's just... Um, Whatever that is that we go through that we need sometimes to step out. But even this morning when I was getting ready and, and Robert asked, he goes, how are you doing? I go, oh, I'm okay. He go, I go, I'm just so afraid I'm going to miss something. That I'm gonna, and then, but I even when I was talking to the Lord about am I going to miss out on something? Am I missing something? And he actually said, no, Lenny, actually there's more. There's more. It was like a, a choo, 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 just open like, oh, no, there's just more. I had put myself in a box and uh, through my own thoughts, but the, the box is open, it's more, and quite honestly, I'll probably operate in my giftings, um, yeah, I think it's going to be even more, I'm really extremely excited, because quite honestly, we're all to be operating 100% in our giftings. Each person sitting in every chair, you're a pastor, you're, you're a teacher, you're an evangelist, you're apostolic, you, you are the church, we, all the, we are the church, operating in everything that we have, title or no title, because we operate in who we are. Don't let any having a title or not ever define who you are, who Christ has made you to be. Know the seasons you're in but continue to operate out of his fullness and his goodness and his destiny and his purpose for you because it's exciting. Amen. Awesome. Those are for you. Those are from all of us. And, yeah, you can leave them there till after service. And then and you have to take them home, though, because we, we will kill them here. So... Um, so we're, we're just going to pray over Robert and Lene. So if you guys want to just stand up or extend a hand, however you want to do it, that's totally fine. And uh, yeah, the, Lene is absolutely right. The gifts, the giftings and callings of God are irrevocable. So what that means is, is as we might make a paper change, you know, a title change, the giftings and callings of God are irrevocable, and that means they don't go away. So that's, you know, we actually, I want to remind you of this funny time about... Two and, uh, three years three years ago, Lene came to me and said, hey, Jason, I am really tired. I think I need to take a break. I, uh, I'm going to take a sabbatical. And she took a sabbatical, and I, I, I do. I just let Lene do whatever she wants. I'm like, and, and sometimes it frustrated her. She's like, no, you have to give me a job. And I'm like, no, you do whatever you want. It's all good. Uh, woo, go. And uh, anyway, so she took a sabbatical, and she was at church more. She, like gave more they like hey we need to replace all the lights in the church and like bought all new fixture you know just all this kind of stuff and it was just so I'm really curious to see how this time <laughs> yeah so okay so we're gonna pray really quick so Robert can go sit down he just had hip surgery and and whatnot so extend a hand Lord Jesus we thank you so much for absolute amazing gifts that you bring to this house uh, by way of people and relationship Lord we thank you so much for Robert and Lene and we know it just wasn't 
uh, Lene pastoring. We know that they were they were doing things together. Lord, we thank you for unity in the in, in marriage and and all that stuff. Lord, we thank you so much for Robert and Lene and everything that they've done for this house, done for your kingdom, their hearts, their giftings, their talents. Lord, and we just say more, more, more. And we bless you as a house. We bless both of you. You 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 are you are stepping out of this position in, in right relationship. And, and, and we bless you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And, and we reluctantly, but yet willingly, release you from uh, pastoring, but not from membership and fellowship of this house. You may never leave. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. <laughs> She'll get them after service. Okay, let's try and switch mics. All right. Well, like I said, if you're visiting, today's going to be a little bit different. We have 10 minutes. And we have to take communion. Yeah. All right, so, man. Uh, I had actually several people ask if I was going to be sharing about our trip that we just took to Virginia. And so I thought uh, with all the stuff going on today that this would be uh, just a great day to do that. But um, So we are, we are going to look at a Bible verse, so this is a legal meeting, and, and we actually prove that we love the Bible here, and we follow it and stuff. So uh, get, get your Bible out, Psalms 27. Psalms 27, we've gone through this before, and we're going to continue to go through it. Uh, I'm just going to hint on a couple of things as I share about this trip that we took to Virginia Beach. Uh, so last week, Ronnie and I and Dean and Anna, we went to the 10-year anniversary of the Burn 24-7 uh, movement. If you're not familiar with the Burn 24-7, uh, it's a lot of people get freaked out at the name Burn 24-7. It's talking about on the road to Emmaus when when the disciples were talking with Jesus. They said, "Did our not did our did our hearts not burn within us uh, once they found out it was Jesus?" So it's like burning with the fire of the Holy Spirit. That's the context. So if you're visiting, just kind of lay that out there for you. So the Burn 24-7, as many of you know, is a uh, worship movement. Uh, Sean Foyt is the founder of it. Uh, it started when he was going to ORU University, and uh, him and his buddies would just get in his dorm, and they would just start uh, spontaneously, hey, let's play guitars and, and worship. And they would start worshiping, you know, 7 o'clock at night. And then pretty soon they're looking out the window and the sun's coming up. And they're like, whoa, we've been worshiping all night. We were burning. And then like, oh, my gosh, it's the burn. That's what we're doing. And so, uh, so it was the 10-year anniversary. We had, I think it was Dean, Anna, Ronnie, you guys can correct me. Was it like 32 nations represented? It was something... Something pretty significant. There was like 32 different nations uh, that are burns. Literally had a, uh, a burn, I believe it was from Indonesia, where just like a year ago, maybe two years ago, they were literally headhunters. Like they'd never heard the gospel before. And the burn went in there. And the way the burn operates is they're not so much... This will be funny. Yeah, it would have been a fun to explain to that guy earlier about the burn. Uh, they're not so much Bible-oriented in the sense of that traditional, do you know Jesus? They go in and they just worship, worship, and worship Jesus. And then people start asking, What's this, who's this Jesus that you're singing to? Boom, open door, they share the gospel. It's a little bit of a different approach, but the same same, same premise. And so the, these headhunters, they, they'd never heard the gospel, and literally now they're planting burns in unreached villages in Indonesia. And it was really funny because uh, Sean was introducing me. He's like, these are the headhunters. 
<laughs> and it was like literally, and can you imagine just sitting next to somebody that, you know, two or three years prior, that their whole tribe and their culture of life was literally headhunting? And seeing that transformation take place in their life and seeing the redemptive story of Christ just li- literally living out, boom, right there, manifest right in front of you. It's pretty amazing. And there was just countless stories of this type of stuff, of unreached villages and unreached uh, uh, stuff going on. Uh, some of the statistics, like right now, Sean is in Jakarta doing, uh, he's been there for like five days doing uh, just nonstop worship. And um, one... Muslim every seven seconds is getting saved. So that's, I don't know how this works out in the kingdom, but that's basically 7.56 Muslims are getting saved every minute. So that means every minute one's on the fence, you know, (laughs) but, you know, (laughs) but, uh, I mean, amazing things are happening. And so, and, and if you don't know about the Revolution Church, you're visiting us. So we are an independent church. However, we have chosen to link arms with some friends, and, and one of those is the Burns. So we're, we're the Revolution Church. We're an independent church, non-denominational, but we've linked arms with the Burn. We also have linked arms with the International Fellowship of Ministry. So we, kind of, we just are developing relationship and networks uh, with people that, that are of like mind. And uh, the way the burn started out, uh, we, we were a burn before we even knew it. Because how burns get started is it's uh, people that just get hungry for their presence and they just worship. And, and when, when Ronnie and I left the vineyard years ago, we were like, we just want to worship. And I just want to sing scripture over and over and over and over until it gets in me. And, and we started in the basement of our house, and, you know, pretty soon, four months later, it's like, oh, my gosh, we're supposed to plant a church, so we did. And, you know, that's how burns start. So we had the opportunity of going for the uh, 10-year anniversary, and Stacy Campbell was there, amazing woman of God, holy cannoli. She was a firecracker. Um, uh, how many of you are familiar with her, Stacy Campbell? Stacy and Wesley Campbell, they used to be vineyard pastors and uh, back in the day and that kind of stuff. And uh, Mike Bickle from IHOP was there. Oh, my gosh. He, like, Stacy was awesome. And I want to have her at the church. And uh, one day, I think, well, I'm just going to say it. One day we'll have her here. Um, but Mike Bickle, this was, his, this was a huge deal to have him here at the 10-year the anniversary. It's his only speaking engagement uh, the entire year. He's not doing a lot of traveling, and so to get him to one of your events is like, oh, you know, big deal. So he was there, uh, actually got to do sound for him, and that was really nerve-wracking. It was a cool experience, and I have never been more nervous to just do sound for one microphone. <laughs> and, and I walked in at like five minutes, and they were like, hey, the sound guy's not here. Is there somebody that knows how to do sound? And they were like, that guy does and <laughs> didn't know where anything was at, didn't know the system, it was just, but he was super graceful, so I got to chat with him very briefly, but wow, 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 um, the dude has absolutely spent time in the presence of the Lord, I don't know if you guys have ever just met somebody, and you're like, whoa, they have spent time in the presence of the Lord, and, and they, I mean, he's been in ministry, a senior pastor uh, for over 40 years, and uh, just uh, uh, IHOP, I believe, was it 94? Anyone can correct me. It was 94 or 96. They started doing 24-7 worship. I think it was 94. Uh, 24-7 worship, and they haven't stopped. Prayer, prayer and worship, 24-7. It's been going on 24-7. He shared just briefly about it, and I am going to get the scripture here in a second. Um, but he just shared briefly about it. They have... Like a full team, you know, I would say that we don't even have a full team in this house. I'm talking drummer, three background vocalists, keyboard, two or three guitar player, a bass player, a fiddle player, you know, full team, right? They have 50 full-time, on-staff, paid worship teams. 50! 50. And I geek out as a church planter. I geek out at these kind of details like, okay, we have 
you know, $15,000 in chairs just in this room. You know, so then when I walk into a church, this church we were at had theater seating, like really nice theater seating, and they were uh, 1,500 chairs in the sanctuary. I'm like, okay, that's... Uh, that's $270,000 in chairs. You know, I'm adding this stuff up. And so I was going with thinking of Mike Bickle and his 50 worship teams. I'm like, if he only pays them $20,000 a year, which he doesn't because he said, we, I pay them a good wage. So if he only pays them $20,000 a year, that's $5 million a year. <laughs> Not counting on the back end of taxes and all that kind of stuff. I was like, whoa, this is significant. This is amazing. So the thing I walked away from Mike Bickle was, A, this man has spent time in the presence of the Lord and he has received revelation. I'm not saying like new revelation. I'm just saying revelation on things. Um, we're we're going to read this really quick. Okay, Psalms 27.4. I love this. This this is one one of my favorite passages, <coughs> and it's one thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. We're just going to stop there. Mike had four twelve point pages and twelve point font pages of notes on Psalms 27.4. And he handed them out to everybody. Here's my notes. And I was sitting there reading, and I was like, this is verse 4. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> you know, and then, and then he went on to preach on it. And, and, and the, thing, the thing, this is the thing, he was like, this whole thing is great. Psalm 20, uh, one thing I have desired of the Lord that I'll seek and that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And this is, the, this is where he stopped and this is where the majority of his notes were. To behold the beauty of the Lord. He was like, the church has really got to get the revelation of the beauty of the Lord. And, and if, if being, being brutally blunt and honest, if we actually got, and I'm including myself in this, if we actually got the beauty of the Lord, we would not be grumbling about, oh, it's Sunday and it's noon and he's still talking. Oh, gosh, they're taking an offering. Oh, oh gosh, they're asking me to vacuum or help with the product. We wouldn't do that. We would be like, I'm so in. I'm in like I've never been in before, you know, or, oh gosh, they want me to go evangelize or talk, oh, you know, it, it would totally, if we, if we could all get a revelation of beholding the beauty of the Lord, it would literally transform your life. If you could get a revelation just of Psalms 27, 4 and 7 eighths, because it's the last sentence, it will change your life. And it was really cool to see a guy, and, and so Mike is, he, he said, you know, I, I've been working on this verse for about 30 years, and I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> amazing, amazing, amazing. And so, uh, like I said, I've preached on this before, and I'm really not, I really had it set in my heart to not preach today, but I wanted to share just, just Psalms 27.4, and, and the thing that we are going to be teaching on and, and just, guys, to behold the beauty of the Lord. When we do that in worship, when we do that in our daily lives, because there was this other really great quote that he said, and Mike's really cool. He's not like, hey, you have to give me credit. You don't, you know, he's like, take my notes, put your name on them. Put it in a book. Take one of my series, put it in a book, publish it, it's yours, great, whatever. I don't, he's like, I don't care. And a super awesome guy. But the thing that he's, the, one of the things that I walked away with <clears throat> and was he said that uh, he was talking about prayer meetings. He's like, how many of you have been to a boring prayer meeting, <laughs> you know, or a boring church service? You know, and he's like, honestly, I want to see hands, right? And so we'll ask the question of you. How many of you, or maybe you're in right now, a boring church service? <laughs> Put your hand up. It's okay. 
right? You have been in or you are in a boring church service, right? I don't think it's really possible today, but it's okay. So anyway, so he was, he was talking about being in this uh, uh, a prayer worship meeting because the way IHOP does things is it's always prayer and worship. They call it kind of harp and bowl. There's kind of what we were doing with prayer a little bit today over Bob. There was music going and then, and then we pray and nothing ever stops, right? And so he was talking about this prayer meeting that he was in and he's the pastor. He's Mark Bickle. You know, he's been doing this forever and he's like uh, just amazing dude. And he was like, it was a really bad prayer meeting and I, and I had to fix it. So he's like, I went up on stage, I took the microphone, and I made it worse. <laughs> he goes, it went from a boring prayer meeting to just, it was bad. It was horrible. He's like, I don't, he was, he's like, I just messed it all up. I prayed a horrible prayer and this and that. And he's like, and, and he got really discouraged in it for a moment. And then he heard the Lord speak, and it was, even when you're not moved, I'm still moved. And so it's that same thing, you know. It's really fun when I get to travel around to different places and listen to, you know, my heroes, Mike Bickle, you know, uh, Bill Johnson, Chris Valter, those kind of guys. And sure, they say it way more eloquently because they've been in ministry. Well, maybe not Chris, but, you know, they say it. <laughs> they say, you know, they say things so well, you know. But uh, they're, we're saying the same thing. Just, they've been doing it way longer, so it just comes out just like, uh, it's like amazing, right? But we're saying the same stuff. And the thing was, is, is uh, even when, when we, you know, I have said this before, when you don't feel like you're supposed to come to church, that's when you're supposed to go to church. Oh, I had a headache, so I didn't come to church. Are you kidding me? You should have come to church, and we could have prayed for you, you would have got healed. Boom, done. Right, And so there's times where you're in a church service, in, in dwell nights, worship night, whatever, and you're just like, praise the Lord, this is so boring, da, da, da. and you're just saying this in your head and, and, and whatnot. But the thing is, is beholding the beauty of the Lord, even when you're not moved, God is still moved. Right, And so that's the thing, that, that, that revelation that we got to get of beholding the beauty of the Lord. And just because you're not feeling it doesn't mean God's not feeling it. Right? And, and uh, so th those are two things that I really took away from uh, our trip. And I am going to kind of be redoing a uh, uh, sermon series on Psalms 24, uh, set 27 for, um, just not today. I want to share one more story if I can. That was really great, and then we're going to take communion, and we'll call it good for today. You guys, are you guys okay with that? Yeah. Okay. So we shared a Bible verse. We love the Bible. We did good. Yeah, we did good. We did good, guys. So, uh, Tom's already putting his away. What if, what if I do another one? He's got it. Okay, good. Okay, so fun story about Mike Bickle. I have never seen him like live in person before, never sat under his ministry, listened to lots of uh, podcasts and stuff. And when usually when people are speaking up front, they're a little more professional, a little more reserved, that kind of stuff. And we had some really great question and answer times, just uh, breakout sessions with them. And there was literally, I think, 175 people there. So... Uh, Basically, this sanctuary size as far as, because it was just for burn leaders. And um, so it was a real intimate time getting to hang out with Mike Bickle. And he was sharing about, um, sorry, hang on one second. He was, th this, th he was sharing this recent story. And what stood out to me was like, wow, the conviction passion and determination of this man is absolutely inspiring. And so he recently, uh, the Pope invited, I don't know how many people it was, I think it was 25 to 40 charismatic leaders, um, Protestant leaders of churches for an audience with the Pope. And it was the first time that this had happened in 500 years. It's been 500 years since a pope has 
has invited Protestant charismatic leaders for an audience with him. And they were able to answer, uh, ask questions. They just had to submit them in writing like two weeks beforehand. And so Mike is sharing about his, he's like, the premise of what he was talking about was, he's like, everyone's okay when you say God loves you or we should be worshiping God and this and that. He goes, but everything kind of shifts when you start talking about Jesus. And he was like, it's time that we start talking about Jesus. He's like, oh man, someone will like clip this audio and I will be a heretic. God isn't enough. <laughs> right? It, 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 we need to be talking about Jesus. Because it's a, because God is ambiguous. Okay, well, what God are we talking about? False gods? Are, and so this is, this is Mike's heart. Like, he's like, I want to know. He was like, I want to know if the Catholic Church, his question that he submitted was, um, do we, do, past popes have said that if you are not baptized in the Catholic Church, then you're not in the kingdom. Which would mean all of us are going to hell because we're not in the Catholic Church. Right? Which, and so Mike wanted to know, is it only the Catholic Church? Is that the way to heaven? <laughs> or is Jesus or is Jesus the way to heaven? So he submitted his question, and as it turns out, they translated it wrong. They translated it wrong, and uh, so the Pope is kind of responding to Mike's question in a very ambiguous way, and it's like he's like, this is not right, this is not my question. And, and um, I believe he said his wife was with him, and he was starting to get kind of something. He was like, something was just stirring in me. And I was, uh, uh, my wife was like, calm down. You got to do it. You know, you're with the Pope, first meeting in 500 years. And then uh, early, earlier in the day, so I got to back up just a little bit. Earlier in the, in the day, uh, they were telling people protocol. This is how you address the Pope and whatnot. And he was, so Mike was like, well, how do I address him? And they said, you address him as Holy Father. And Mike was like, uh... I have one holy father. Um, I can't do that. Can't do that. Wow, to have conviction. To say, I can't address you as holy father. So, there's that story. So now we're fast forwarding into this thing. They've translated his question wrong. And, and this thing is rising up. And he's like, I have to know. I can't not know. I have to have an answer for this. I have to have an answer for this. And so he just stands up. I have a question. <laughs> and, the, and the like security guy, it's like meeting the president. You got the you know, security people and they're all sit down. Don't say anything. And he's like, no, I ha this is important. You mistranslated my question. I have to have an answer for this. And then they re he re-asked the question. They reinterpreted it now incorrectly. <laughs> and he was like, no, <laughs> I ha this is the question. I need an answer for it. And his wife was like, <laughs> and all the security people are like. <laughs> and then uh, this lady comes over to the Pope uh, which, as he found out later, was his personal assistant of 17 years to the Pope, right? And so uh, Mike Bickle's thinking, he's like, oh, great, first meeting in 500 years. They're shutting it down. They're going to fly all of us home. We are, I ruined it for everybody, you know? And what she did was is she translated his question directly in the Pope's ear, and the Pope stands up and says, this is the most important question of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Could you imagine that having having the cojones to you're meeting you're meeting the the Pope, and number one you're t you're told to you're told to address him as Holy Father, and you're like, no, I honestly don't. I probably wouldn't have given it much thought, but he he did right, and 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 then to interrupt the meeting and have the little Secret Service guys like the the Catholic Secret Service like sit down you know be quiet, and you're like, no. I have to know. And so the Pope answered the question, and his answer was, Jesus is the only way to the Father. Yes. Right? And so that's cool in itself. So what Mike is talking about, he's like, I just have to know if I can stand with my Catholic brothers and sisters. He's like, he goes, so much of the, of the church, and we experience this uh, here even locally, 
There are so many walls up between churches. If we don't agree on all 5,000 doctrinal statements, then we can't even worship together. And it's ridiculous. It's something that, uh, I use a burn term for this. I've been plowing in this city for seven years trying to break this wall down with a jackhammer. You know, and we have like two churches that will hang out with us now. And that's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Right? And I don't mean that in a, in a silly way. Actually, three. Sorry. Uh, and and it, it, it's coming. It's, it's, and, and so my, Mike's whole premise was, is great. I do not, he was saying, I do not agree with all of the theological deals of the Catholic Church, but if, if we can just agree on Jesus Christ, him crucified, him resurrected, and he's the only way to get to heaven, then, then we can stand with him, right? And, and it's just going back to the simplicity of the bo- uh, gospel. And so that, that was another thing. It was a really funny story, and it was just it really kind of showed how much integrity, character, and passion that, that Mike had. And I was just blown away by it. And it was absolutely comical hearing him tell the story. Uh, we were all just laughing because he was sharing about how nervous he was. And his wife is like, ah, oh, you, you were pretty angry there. And he was like, no, I was just passionate. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> and, you know, in the presence of the Pope. So, um, and then uh, Chris Valentin in one of his podcasts recently kind of made fun of Mike a little bit. But he was like, man... I give him credit because I wouldn't have done, you know, the kind of thing, because it's like, that was a big deal. So, all right, so our trip was awesome. Uh, got to hang out with some pretty awesome people. Got vision for the burn for the next 10 years. Um, the burn, uh, which is uh, really cool, they're actually going to be turning into a church planting movement. So, we're linked, we're already linking, linking arms and been a part of the burn for about four and a half years. Um, it is just another way for us to help sow into church plants, church plants, and uh, and be involved with church planting because that's something that's very much on my heart, um, and and it's a big deal, right? Uh, and worship obviously is a big deal. Um, missions is missions worship has been the two, you know, um, worship, prayer, and missions have been the burns primary focus, and it's fun to see church planting adding to that, and. Uh, I, I'm just super stoked for the next, you know, several years. We're going to get more involved. We're going to we're going to start having more burns and that kind of stuff here. We just got to get things organized and have enough help. Because in the beginning, for those of you that have been with us for a long time, we we were the uh, as far as other ministries that I checked in with and whatnot. We're the only church, first church, uh, that has corporately done 30 plus hours of nonstop live worship as a gathering. In, in this entire peninsula. Uh, we were the first ones that did 12 hours. We were the first ones that did 20 hours. And then we were the first ones that did 30 hours. And that 30 hour, I think we actually went like 32 hours, but um, it was tough because it was, we just didn't have enough people. We had sleeping bags all over the sanctuary and people were snoring during worship, taking shifts and Deb and Sonia and Delane were in the back room at the Carpenter's Hall cooking breakfast and food and we were doing stuff in shifts. It was pretty funny. So we just want to make sure we have enough people to help facilitate that before we do it. But it, it's coming. And uh, so I hope you guys are encouraged. Uh, and, and just really, here, here's two things to walk away with today. Let's remember Psalms 27.4. Let's behold the beauty of the Lord. Behold the beauty of the Lord. Behold the beauty of the Lord. And remember... Even when you're not moved, he's still moved. So pay attention. Because Jesus is important. It's all about Jesus, and it's not that cliche religious statement. When, when you get a revelation of beholding the beauty, and even when we're not moved, he's moved, that statement of it's all about Jesus takes on totally different form. Okay? All right, uh, why don't you guys stand up? You guys did awesome. I know we went long. Um, yeah, no, I haven't forgotten. That's why. We're going to take communion. Caleb, if you can bring it over here, that would be awesome. Here's how we uh, operate communion in our church. Uh, we practice open communion. You don't have to be a member of the church, member of Revolution Church, because the funny secret is uh, we don't have any members of the Revolution Church. You actually won't find membership in the Bible. Um, so it's, it, 
The only reason why churches have membership is so they can get loans and stuff. Kind of shows your customer base. Um, so anyway, there's a fun little fact for you. Uh, so biblically, it's not in there. So practice open communion. So what does that mean? If you don't know Jesus, come talk to me. We'll, we'll pray for 15 seconds, and you'll know Jesus, and you can take communion. It's literally that simple. Okay, we don't make it this big, arduous thing. You don't have to go to classes uh, to learn how to meet the Lord. You know, um, you don't have to go to... I know I'm going off on a bunny trail, but it just cracks me up. There's churches even in our own town where you have to go to classes to take communion. You have to go to classes to get baptized. It's like, where is that at in the Bible? It's just not... I had one, one guy called me a while ago, and he was like, I can't take communion until I give money to the church and tithe. Where is that at in the Bible? So you want to take communion? You take communion. We're going to bless the elements. You come up in, in, uh, in, in just a moment, and we'll, we'll do this. So Lord Jesus, we thank you for the simplicity of the gospel. We thank you that, uh, I thank you that you have called me to lead a church in simplicity. That is... Uh, <laughs> Learning how to be moved even when you're not moved. Or when we're, yeah, you guys got what I'm saying. Sorry. See, I'm human. <laughs> Lord, I thank you for everything that you're doing. Lord, and as we partake of the elements, Lord, that this is really a prophetic declaration of uh, your body being broken for us and your blood being shed for us, Lord. And as that goes and enters into our body, that we are one with you and that, that it it can't change at that point and that you'll never leave us you'll never forsake us lord and we just thank you that we're learning how to behold the beauty of your presence so god i ask that you would just bless these elements as we partake of them lord that that literally transformation and healing would take place as we do this we love you we adore you amen all right guys come on up and uh, you can take them. You can sit on the steps up here by the, the, the stage. You can go back to your chair however you want. So take every song, every spoken word, all of my dance, all of Thank you, Papa. Lord, we just thank you for blessing this communion. We thank you for every person that takes it. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we adore you. We adore you, Papa. We adore you, Papa. Jesus, we adore you. Jesus. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Papa. Jesus, we adore you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Papa. Take that lonely one. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Papa. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for your body broken for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Father. Yes, we thank you. We pour out our worship. Yes, Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, Papa. It's all for you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Sound booth people, if you guys want to come out. You guys got it? You good? Do we have stuff for downstairs too? You're awesome, Sonia. Great. Jeez, yeah, just keep it going for a minute. Amen. That's good. It's awesome. That is a great song. Julie Meyer from IHOP, one of those 50 worship leaders. My goodness. It's like we're just trying to learn how to manage one. <laughs> really? If you would see the, the scheduling that Jesse goes through with the little changes and this and that, it's just like, it's one. Times that, I add another 49 to it. It's like, shoo. Anyway, all right. Why don't you guys stand up? Jesus, we just adore you. I want to tell you guys that, um, you know, as the father of the house, you guys did an awesome job today. Loving on Bob and Patty and, uh, and, and flowing in worship. Because, you know, so many people think that worship is just, you know, as, as Sean says from the burn, three fast, three slow. So many people think it's three fast and three slow. And there might be a set where it's actually like that. But what I love about our house and how you guys did a good job is there were interruptions. We were moving chairs. We were organizing things. And it just kept going. It just kept going. It just kept going. And we, we moved in and out of ministry time to just back into personal adoration time. It was, you guys did a great job. You guys really did. I love that the kids were praying for Bob because, you know, in a lot of places, you don't get to pray for people until you're of age because that's when you get the full size Holy Spirit, right? <laughs> There's no junior size. The kids are in some ways more powerful than we are, you know, because they don't have all the, the barriers that we have as adults. So you guys did a great job. I'm super proud of you. I am stoked, not because I'm the pastor, but I'm stoked to be a part of this, this house with you guys. And guys, we, I'm just telling you, we have absolutely amazing, great things ahead of us. We shared the video at the 10-year anniversary and it's like we have, uh, I won't go long, I promise. Uh, we just, just in sharing the video, we have a husband-wife team in Texas. They uh, came and talked to Ronnie and I, and they were like, hey, um, we want to volunteer our time. We'll fly out. We, we'll, we'll do dishes. We'll help with admin. We'll do whatever. We just want to come out and help out with the school next year. Uh, had pe I have... Uh, Two people from Colorado. Hey, is the website working yet? How can I register? And this is all like in four days' time, you know, of, of just a, a two minute video, you know, and stuff. So, I mean, it's, uh, and then been getting some other emails here and there, and I don't want to make it bigger than it is, but I'm just telling you, we have amazing, great things coming for us, uh, and as a house and as individuals, and, and uh, you guys are just doing a great job, okay? So keep up the good work. And get involved in more. You can do it. We can all do it, right? And uh, next week is the barbecue. Next week we should have t-shirts and hats. And uh, I honestly feel like we did good on ministry today. I really do. So I'm just going to pray over you guys and bless you and release you. And I, uh, I feel good with that today. Um, so, Okay. So why don't you guys get in a receiving posture, whatever that is for you. For me, it's like this, like I'm going to get a big present, like a new guitar or something. I, not that I need one. A room full of them, yeah. Anyway.
Lord Jesus, thank you so much. Yes. He's calling us, guys. He's calling us. All right. Lord, we thank you for everything you're depositing in this house. God, I thank you that we are a family, that we don't have to be so polished. And so we're starting at 10 minutes and 32 seconds, and we can only talk for five minutes. Lord, I thank you that we can flow in your presence and really be a family, really be a community, and really stand with each other in, in, in the good, the bad, and the misunderstood, and with all the questions and all that kind of stuff, God. We just thank you for, for Revolution Church and your kingdom and uh, everything that you're doing, God. I say that all the time, but I really mean it. It's just, oh, he's doing so much good stuff. So, Lord, I ask that, uh, that we would be reminded of Psalms 27.4 this week, that we would re- uh, corporately and individually receive a revelation of what it is to behold the beauty of your presence. And, Lord, that we would also receive revelation on the fact that when we're not moved, When we're not in the mood, you're still moved. So next time you don't feel like going to church, next time you don't feel like praying for somebody, next time you don't feel like the thing, do it anyway and see what happens. All right? So we just bless you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We release you today. Have an awesome day. You guys are great. I am super stoked. Go, go, go. Amen. Yeah.